my friends you're back again for another episode the free your energy podcast featuring me best-selling author sylvester making the third as always no commercials for now maybe that'll change in the future today we're talking about how to love yourself more today three things you must do to love yourself more today you know you scour the internet and you'll see a bunch of people like me saying hey you should love yourself more love yourself more and the question then becomes okay how yeah okay i get it my guy i get it friend i get it guru writer speaker whoever whoever you are you're telling me to love myself more, but what does that actually mean? What does that actually look like? How how can I practically do this? Like, is it realistic for someone like me who I'm not doing well? I'm not I'm not liking myself. I'm not liking where my life is at. I'm bothered. I'm upset. Is it realistic for me to love myself more? The answer is yes. If you are out there and you're struggling with loving yourself more, and you know that you need to love yourself more, but you don't know how, this podcast is for you. I'm going to tell you a couple of steps, and I'm going to keep it simple. Three main steps that you should focus on if your goal is to love yourself more. The very first thing you must do is practice accepting who you are. To give you a clearer picture of what that looks like, you have to understand that this process occurs in your head, right? Loving yourself occurs in your head first. It occurs with your mindset first. It occurs with the way you talk to yourself about yourself. Instead of using words and phrases that destroy self, that destroy self-esteem or create thoughts of lower value or create a pessimistic mindset, don't do that. Monitor your thoughts. Monitor your thoughts. This isn't an overthinking process. It's not about overthinking. It's not about thinking at all. It's about your intuition of you monitoring your own thoughts of yourself. It's about introspection. And and just paying attention. When you find yourself talking crazy to yourself, about yourself, I simply challenge you to check yourself, to check those thoughts. If you consistently check those thoughts, then that's how you, you change them. And since you are trying to love yourself more, you have to learn to monitor your thoughts because your thoughts about yourself is what creates self-love. When you catch yourself talking crazy about yourself, you can change the narrative. Change how you talk. Instead of saying, I'm terrible at this and I'm not worthy, say something like, you know what? I'm not where I envision myself at the moment, but I'm working on it and I'm being patient. Do you hear the difference in that? I'm terrible at this and I'm not worthy. Do you hear how aggressive that is? Right? But you guys are talking to yourself that way. I'm terrible at this. I suck. I'm no good. I'm not worthy. Right? You're talking to yourself that way. So then you're creating that vibration. You're creating that lifestyle. Instead, just simply say, I'm not where I want to be. But I'm working on it. And I'm being patient while I work on it. You can literally hear the tone in my voice change. You can literally see the facial expressions on my face change. That's how you know you're practicing self-love. Don't beat yourself up. You want to lift yourself up. When it comes to self-love, let's take a step back and just remove the word self And let's just use the word love. Now, love is an emotion. But to me, and you don't have to agree with this, but to me, I understand that love is an emotion, but love is also a behavior, right? Love is also something that you can do. 
So if you believe that love is something you can do and you believe that you can love another person through your actions, then that would also mean that you believe that you can love yourself through your own actions, right? So if you're falling into the trap of not enough self-love, you have to find the actions for your own self that show you that, that you love yourself, right? You would look at your partner and you would say, well, you do X, Y, Z, and that's how I know you love me. You would also look at your partner and say, well, you don't do A, B, C, and that's how I know you don't love me, right? So you can look at yourself and say, well, self, I do A, B, C, and that's how I know I don't love me, and I need to stop doing A, B, C. But I do X, Y, Z, and that's how I know I love me. So what you'll want to do is more X, Y, Z behaviors. The behaviors that show you to yourself, that prove to yourself that you love yourself. You want to do more of those. And the ABC behaviors, the ones that you don't really uh, like and care for, you want to do less of those. Yes, love is a feeling, right? But I feel like how you show love matters. When we are talking about self, self-love matters. And if you judge how you love another person based on behavior, then to me, it seems that you should look at your own behavior for self. Loving yourself means doing more activities that impact your energy, your mood, your thoughts, and your life in a positive way. Loving yourself means that you do more activities that impact your energy, your mood, your thoughts in a positive way. Loving yourself means doing more activities that impact your energy, your mood, your thoughts in a positive way. Do more of what you love. Do more of what makes you feel loved. Do more of what makes you feel happy. If you're going to work 40, 50 hours a week, put yourself in a position where you enjoy your job, where you enjoy your career, where you enjoy what you're doing. If you're going to be in a romantic relationship with someone, bring fun to the relationship. Bring excitement. Bring some happiness. Bring good energy. Make your relationship fun. Never lose the childlike, you know, curiosity that we have because that creates fun. Bring fun to your relationship. Your relationship does not need to be serious all the time. As far as self-love goes, and you're working on the behaviors, right, of, of adding more self-love to your life, one thing I want you to do is make a list of five to seven things that you love. Now, they could be activities, it could be experiences, you just figure it out. Five to seven things that you love doing. And then, what I want you to do is do one of those things every single day. Now you may have days where you could do a couple of those things in the same day, that's fine. But I want you to, if you struggle with self-love, I want you to figure out five to seven things you love doing. And for the next week, I want you to do one of those things every day. If that, and think small, right? Going for a walk, going for a swim, maybe playing with your kids, maybe listening to your favorite podcasts, maybe watching movies, right? Hitting the gym, playing tennis, playing basketball, playing darts, bowling, whatever, drawing, painting, singing, dancing, figure out five to seven things that you love and understand that they may not, you may not all love them all the same, but figure out five to seven things that you love and do one of them every day for the next seven days. 
And then on that eighth day, I challenge you to see how you feel. Part of the, the struggle of self-love is that, one, we don't know what self-love looks like for us individually. And that's what I'm challenging you to do right now. I'm challenging you to figure out, what does self-love look like for me? What makes me happy? Right? And then my challenge to you is, once you know what makes you happy, once you know five to seven activities that make you happy, now my challenge is to do one daily, at least one. Do you think you can do that? Because I think you can. If you're going to take my advice, if you're going to take my challenge, comment below, email me, DM me, send this to a friend, tell them what your five to seven things are. I'm really curious to know, out of my listeners, what five to seven things you guys feel like, hey, this gives me self-love. This is, you know, a behavior that I need more of. I would really like to hear from you guys. So uh, leave a comment if you're on the YouTube. If you guys are on the podcast, I don't think you can comment on podcasts. <laughs> if you can, let me know. That's that's the future. Make them. Yeah, that is the future. Uh, so let me know. Now I'm going to give you guys the last, uh, the last, the last tip. Then I'm going to get out of here. Actually, I got some very important news for you. Actually, let me tell you the news now, and then I'll give you the last tip. Fair? So the news is this. I am going back on tour, the Free Your Energy Tour. I'm ready to speak. I'm ready to see you guys. I'm ready to talk to you in person. I have a bunch of content. I have a bunch of value to bring you around personal development, developing yourself, inspiring yourself to be your greatest self, freeing your energy. I believe we are starting in San Diego on June 2nd, going to Atlanta on June 15th, Los Angeles, June 22nd, Miami, July 20th, and Chicago, July 30th. Now look, that's five cities right now. Here's the deal. If you guys live there, I suggest you go get your tickets right now. SylvesterMcNutt.net slash events. Go get your ticket today. Each room has a capacity. Once the room reaches the capacity, I'm not allowed to let other people in. So I recommend you get a ticket. That's like less than a month away. Go get your ticket. SylvesterMcNutt.net slash events. It's going to be a great time. We're going to be talking about how to free your energy. Nobody has to talk. I'll do all the talking. You guys are who are super introverted and shy, come out. You can come by yourself. You can bring friends. You can bring family. I recommend you just bring the whole gang. Just bring everybody. Bring everybody you hang out with, your husband, your wife, your side girl, your side husband, whatever you guys are doing, just, just bring everybody. No, don't do that. <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> don't, don't bring any drama. <laughs> No, but seriously, it's going to be a good time. There's going to be a lot of good energy. We're going to basically just talk about ways to develop ourselves and improve ourselves and, you know, just create uh, the life that we deserve, create the life that we're all worthy of. And, you know, I hope to bring nothing but good energy to you guys. I hope to just bring you a lot of value. All right. So now, okay, in case you didn't hear me, SylvesterMcNutt.net. Go to my website, SylvesterMcNutt.net. Go to the events page, look at those five cities, and then... You know, grab your tickets, okay? They're only 20 bucks. Grab your ticket. All the information, dates, time, all that is on there. Now, if you didn't hear your city call, that means two things. That means, one, you need to tell me where to come. If you need me to be where you are and you can bring some people out, you need to tell me. Hey, Sylvester, you need to come speak here. Come on. What are you, what are you doing? You need to tell me where I need to go. I believe in going where the love is. So, if you tell me where the love is, I'll go. That also means that maybe I need help getting a venue booked in your city. Maybe I need help. You know, I'm, I'm small potatoes. I don't have corporate sponsorship. You, you guys know that. I'm just a, I'm just a guy who's, who's, who does what he loves. Who I'm just chasing my passion. I just love sharing ideas about self development, and how we can grow. So maybe I need your help. Maybe you need to reach out to me and say, Hey, how, how can I help you? How can I help you get to my city so you can give words to people in my city? I'm not uh, opposed to help. I'm not opposed to guidance. You know, my mind is free. My energy is free. So if I can get help to help others, 
Let's do it. Now, the last tip. The choices you make in life can build you up or break you down. Some of them keep you neutral too. Self-love is really about examining your own choices and being aware of how they impact you. Self-love is about examining your own choices and being fully aware of how they impact you. Another term to remember is positive reinforcement. A, uh, if you make a choice that is a, a positive choice, right, you want to reward yourself. You want to give yourself a positive reward. Give yourself a, an attaboy, as they, as they say. When you do that, you will condition yourself to do that behavior more. For example, let's just, let's come up with let's, two struggles that people have, right? One struggle is you know, people are inconsistent with the gym or, or, or their yoga routine or hiking or uh, running their miles or swimming their laps. Whatever fitness it is, right? People are, there are some people who are inconsistent with it and they don't have the results they want because they are inconsistent. They go two times a week, okay, that's not enough for them. Uh, once a week, that's definitely not enough, you know. You go four times this week, you go five times next week. Or maybe you're super late and you're just not punctual. Those are two things that people struggle with, right? So let's just use both of those. For example, uh, if you struggle with tardiness at school or maybe you're inconsistent in the gym, what I want you to do is set a small goal, right? Set a small goal to be on time the whole week or to make sure you hit all your workouts this week, right? Set a small goal. A week go for the week right once you execute the small plan you then give yourself positive feedback and you give yourself a reward like hey good job man pat yourself on the back so the question is what does that look like right what does that look like what does a positive reward look like Well, a conversation with self that simply says, hey, man, I, I'm so proud of your effort this week. My struggle has been being tardy. And this week I set my intention and I focused and I was on time all week. Good job. I'm proud of you. Right. That is positive reinforcement for your choices. And when you positively reinforce choices like this that positively impact your life in a good way that is self-love that is how you give yourself self-love through action is positive reinforcement of a positive behavior that is how you give yourself self-love it's a monologue inside of you simply man good job good job good job that's it good job you did good. Good effort. Good job. You're all right. Come on. Good job. That's self-love right there. My friends, this is the Free Your Energy Podcast. I'm your host, author, Sylvester McNutt III. Coming to a city near you. Get your tickets from sylvestermcnutt.net slash events. If you're interested in reading one of my books on self-love and developing yourself, I recommend a couple of them, actually. I mean, I recommend all of them, but let's just, let me just give you two. The most recent book, Care Package, A Path to Deep Healing, I recommend reading that if you are going through any struggles, any pains. In that book, we talk about overcoming anxiety, overthinking, people-pleasing, setting boundaries, shame, guilt, all that stuff. All that is interconnected with codependency and narcissist and trying to develop a healthy lifestyle for yourself. I highly recommend you read, you read Care Package, A Path to Deep Healing. You can find that book on Amazon.com as well as SilverSmithNut.net. Now, there's another book I recommend for you. The other book I recommend is going to be called Lust for Life. That book is all about abundance and developing the abundance mindset. Part of the reason we struggle with self-love is because we believe in scarcity. And one of the things I am trying to teach you, myself, and anyone who's willing to listen is abundance, developing abundance. Abundance doesn't mean greed, it means 
developing actually this podcast is over I'll talk more about Lust for Life in another episode free your energy